Um, so this was the basic. We spent a couple of days on this. And again, Friday walking around, everybody was doing pretty good on this. Um, if you put all these things together, I don't spe- I don't write it out. But in terms of what's highlighted up here, um, this sets up the whole little Sokotoa. All right, the SHO. So that was the ah, so part of that. I'm not sure why that's changed. There, there, now I can complete that. So that's the so, and then the cosine was the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the tangent was the opposite over the adjacent. That's what you're just filling out just now here with these numbers, okay? So Julia, what do you get for sine of A, Julia? Good. Opposite side is 15. The hypotenuse is 17. Mo, what did you get for tangent? Good. Opposite over the adjacent for angle A, opposite adjacent. And then the cosine of B, Ben, what do you got? Good. Cosine of angle B, uh, not quite. Because now it's angle B, so don't get fooled by the change in the angle here. Good. 15 over that 17. All right. So those are our three, just sine, cosine, tangent. Know which angle you're looking at, because that obviously switches around opposites and adjacents. But that's what we spent Thursday and Friday doing. Um, so hopefully that kind of comes back to us a little bit. Still going to be dealing with that a little bit. But we're going to add a layer here um, that can sometimes be a little confusing, and then you won't be able to do these without your calculator. Um, so in this case, it says to find the missing side of a right triangle. So if I now gave you this, and I wanted you to find X and Y. Um, don't write this. But if I had given you this side as like a 10, now that we would have had two of the three sides, we could have done the Pythagorean theorem and we could have figured out what that Y is. Um, same if I would have given you what Y is. As long as we know two of the three sides, then we're able to do the Pythagorean theorem. But if you notice, we only have one side, but we also are now given one angle. Okay. So here's what we now need to do for this. So you can see down here, it says given the measure of angle A and the adjacent segment. So here is angle A, here is the adjacent segment. So here's what we want to do if we want to solve. We're going to do this down here to find X. So we're going to use the angle that we are given. And then if that is the angle that we are given, in terms of these words, opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse, X is the what of angle 42 here, of angle A. Is it the adjacent, the hypotenuse, or is it the opposite? Right, Armando, what would X be? Since that's what we're looking for, X, good. So if we're going to find X, we definitely want to use the opposite side. All right. Look at the side that we know. We also know the side of 12. So we're looking for X. We're looking for this side. And we know this side. So if X we said is the opposite, 12 would have to be either the adjacent or the hypotenuse. Well, if I look at 12, definitely not the hypotenuse because the hypotenuse is opposite of the right angle. So in relationship to the angle that we know, we are looking for the opposite sign and we are given the adjacent side. So again, let me write this out so we can reference this. You will continue to use this little idea. If we are looking for the opposite and we know the adjacent, the opposite and the adjacent would imply we are dealing with a tangent, okay? So we're gonna set up the tangent function. So go ahead and write the tangent in. Here's where this is now for the first time a little bit different. We don't have to put, so don't write this right now. We don't have to put the variable A because what do we know angle A is now equivalent to? Okay. No, just a, actually the degree measure. So right here, if I look at angle A, good. We know that this angle is a 42. So we're now going to put the tangent of 42 degrees is equal to, and then again, since we're doing the tangent right here, we're going to do the opposite side over the adjacent side. The opposite side is now that X. The adjacent side is the 12. That's the equation that we need to now solve. 
Okay. So the way we solve this, so you don't necessarily need to write this down, uh, but I don't even think we've done simple little ones like this. At some point in your life, you would have solved little equations like this. And you would have been taught in order to solve for X, if we're dividing by 12, we'd want to multiply by 12 to get rid of that. And then that would mean we'd have to multiply the other side by 12. And then in this case, X would be a 24. That's largely what we're going to be doing here. If I'm trying to isolate X, which is what our answer is, we're trying to figure out what the X is. The way I undo division is through multiplication. So I'm going to multiply by 12. That's what would get that 12 to go away. The only thing I am left with on the right hand side is X, which is good because that's what we're trying to solve for. But it's an equation. So whatever I do to one side, which I multiplied by 12, then I better do to the other side. So the answer to this question is 12 times the tangent of 42. This now cannot be answered without your calculator. So now at this point, this was on that homework assignment. Yeah, I gave that back on Friday where you had to plug these into your calculator. So this is now what we are plugging into our calculator. All right, just like it looks, making sure you're in degrees. So you're gonna to go to your calculator. We said it's gonna be 12 times the tangent of, was it 42? Yeah, 42, I'm pretty sure. So put that into your calculator just like that. <clears throat> Hit enter. That has to be the length of X. All right, 10.8. So we come down here, and then we now know that X is 10.8. I asked you to go to the nearest hundredth. That's the second decimal place. Your second decimal was a zero. The number after it was only a four, so that wouldn't change. You're just going to leave that as 10.80. All right, this is the length of X. All right. Now, we still need to figure out what Y is. So let's come up to here. Now we've got all kinds of options. Um, we now know that X is 10.8. So let's say we label this as 10.8. The first way we're gonna do it is with the new stuff. So if I wanted you to now solve for this length right here, isn't this length here your hypotenuse? So if I'm going to solve for Y with the hypotenuse, I've now got to use either the sine or the cosine because those are the two that incorporate the hypotenuse in the little acronym. Okay. All right. If I do the sine of this angle 42, I would need to know the opposite side and the hypotenuse. Do I now know the opposite side here? Yeah. Or if I do the cosine, I would need to know the adjacent side, which we do, and then the hypotenuse is going to be your Y. So as we go through these, there's going to be a whole lot of different ways that we can do them. Okay. I am going to use the side that was given. So I'm going to use the 12 since that was given to us and we're looking for the Y. So if this is our angle, isn't this now the adjacent side that we were given? And are we looking for the hypotenuse? So if I'm going to do adjacent and hypotenuse, the adjacent and the hypotenuse is a cosine. So I'm going to say the cosine of angle 42. And then we're just filling it in like you did at the top of the page. But now you're going to get some variables. Is the adjacent side? The adjacent side is 12. And the hypotenuse is the variable y. Now, when I solve this, we never want our variable in our denominator here. So what we're going to do is multiply it out of there. So since I'm dividing by Y currently, I'm going to multiply the Y out of the denominator. But like we said, whatever we do to one side, you've got to do to the other. So I'm going to multiply the other side by Y as well. So right now we have Y times the cosine of 42 is equal to 12. If I'm solving for Y and it is now being multiplied by the cosine of 42, we undo multiplication through division. So now I'm going to divide this by the cosine of 42. These are going to cancel. So now what you are plugging into your calculator, there's three different versions in terms of what we're looking for that we're going to do today. The first one, you were taking some numerical value and multiplying it by your trig function. Now to get this answer, you've got to take that 12 and we've got to divide it by that trig function. All right. So now plug this into your calculator. So does that 12 over the cosine of 42? 
And again, if you know how to get the fraction key, just pop that thing up. That's probably the simplest. And then you just make it look just like what it looks like on your paper. So you're going to do 12. And then you're going to divide that by the cosine of 42. All right. Notice how we get that 16.1. The four is your hundredth spot. So if you look behind the four, notice how that's a seven. That means we want to round this to 0.15. So 16.15. All right. And then that is your answer. <clears throat> However, there's going to be a lot of options again. That is, it's up to you how you do this. But what I want you to also now understand is, so we'll do this over here. Once I knew that this was 10.8, and once I knew that this is 12, couldn't we have used the Pythagorean theorem at that point as well? We wouldn't have had to do the whole Sokotoa stuff. So just to show that that was an option, let's say I would have taken 10.8, once I had found 10.8 squared, and then do my 12 squared, and then that would equal y squared, this better give me the exact same answer, just a different process. All right, and you're more familiar with the Pythagorean theorem anyway, so that would be a, a good option. So now let me plug these into our calculator, do 10.8 plus squared plus 12 squared. So there's a 10.8 squared plus a 12 squared. All right, notice how that's 260.64. That is equal to y squared. The way we get rid of square roots or squares are with square roots. So now I want the square root of 260.64. So if I go to my calculator and I now tell it to do the square root of that answer that we just got, notice how you're gonna get 16.14 as well. Same exact answer. Once we knew two of the sides, we could have done the Pythagorean theorem as well. Eventually when I turn this over to you on a quizzes and tests assignments, you can solve it however you want. So once we kind of knew what this X value was, we could have done the new stuff, the trig stuff, or we could have gone back to the Pythagorean theorem. Either way, you get that 6.1, 16.15, okay? All right, the third thing that you're going to have to do, the third way to plug this in, and this is probably the trickiest, um, and hopefully you have a calculator that looks like mine. Um, it says, let's say we want to find the missing angle. So now we know all three sides. So this is 9, this is 40, this is 41. There's no mystery about what the lengths are. We know the lengths of all the triangles. But let's say I wanted you to figure out A. All right, if we want to know what angle A is, we're stuck. Every problem we've done up until this point, finding an angle, so don't write this down. I would have given you like this angle is like 20, and then we would know these all add up to be 180. So you would do 180 minus 90 minus 20, and that's how we figure out that angle. But if we don't know two of the three, kind of like the Pythagorean theorem, we need a different option. All right, so here is this option. And again, all kinds of different ways that we can do this, but for sure we need to do angle A. And actually, I'm going to probably have you do this a few ways, but since over here I have this as the inverse sign here, we're going to do this with the sign. So I'm going to say the sign of this angle equals, actually set that up. This is what we've been doing over and over again for the last few days. So go ahead and say the sign of the angle is equal to what? That should be the easy part. <clears throat> All right, and Omar, what is the sine of this angle equal to? Over. Good. 9 over 41. All right, however, let's say I ask you to find the cosine. So now do the cosine of angle A. Do that for me real quick. All right, and Ella, what is the cosine of angle A? Good. 40 over 41. And then last but not least, let's say I ask you to find the tangent of angle A. And Armando, what is the tangent of angle A? Good. 9 over 40. All right. So now what we need to be able to do is we need to get that A by itself. We need to solve for A. So it's an equation. So now understand this is different than anything you've seen before. If I would have had like 3A equals 27. The way you get rid of that three, since it is a product, you would divide that thing over. That's how we would isolate A. Well, for the first time, what we need to do, if we need to get this A by itself, we need to get rid of this sine function. 
what you can't do, and I'll show on the calculator why you can't, you can't like divide by a sign. So if I try thinking I'm going to divide by this, watch what happens when I plug this into the calculator. If I did nine over 41 and I divided by a sign, notice how it needs the sign of something. If I hit enter right now, it's going to give us an error. All right, we screwed it up. That's not how you do that. We can't divide by a sign all by itself. So the way we solve these is what you need to do is to do, so there is a key on the calculator. This is what, 9 over 41. To get rid of this sign, you're going to use what is called this little second sign key on the calculator. It's called an inverse sign. So go to your calculator and right so let me get out of this guy uh notice your sign key is right here we should be familiar with that at this point right above it see how you see this little blue sign to a negative one when we are solving for the angle that's what we need to hit so in order to access that you got to hit this blue second key because it's the second function for that calculator then hit sign notice how it gives me this little sign to the negative one now you plug in what was it nine over 41 yeah, now you plug in 9 divided by 41. Hit enter. That should be your angle, 12.68. All right, we all getting that? All right, so write that down for angle A. But what I also, let's see if we understood this now. Let's go to this one, because I've said there's going to be all kinds of options for these. Let's say I ask you to solve this one. If I ask you to solve this one, plug this in now. So we could have done the cosine. Now you're going to do that little inverse cosine. So now do the second cosine of 40 over 41. Plug that in. So we did sine at first, but we also did the cosine. Is this going, is this fitting out the exact same answer? Yeah. So that should also be 12.68. And then if I wanted to use the tangent at the beginning, because some people are going to see these all differently when we turn you loose on these, if I throw this into my calculator, so now do second tangent of 9 over 40. Notice how that gives you the identical answer. Okay, so all three of them can be used if we know all the, the appropriate sides. All right, so then that is our 12.68 degrees. All right. Now I will want all of these. So I would want find the missing angles, both of them. Now that we know that this is 12.68 degrees, you could set up another trick function, but now you're kind of being silly. If we just don't go back to the whole, I know there's 180 degrees in a calculator or in a triangle, you're going to subtract away the 90 degree angle. You're going to subtract away the angle that we just found. And then whatever remains has to be the missing angle. All right. So we hit enter. And then we now know angle B had to be 77.32. All right, so then angle B, 77.32. All right. So there's three different ways to plug these in. This can get a little bit weird. Okay, this is stuff that sometimes people have a hard time with these first few days and on the quiz. So we want to understand which we're doing. Are we multiplying? Are we dividing? Are we going to have to do the second sign? Okay. All right, so go to number one. Go on the back page, and we're going to mix these up a little bit. All right, actually, let's do this. Let's not make this one overcomplicated. Solve for angle A. So this you could have done two months ago because this is a triangle. We know two of the three sides. So we can just rely on the old full 180, subtract the 90, subtract the 51 degrees. Whatever remains has to be that missing angle. All right, I'll agree with that. All right, so when we do that, that should have been what a 39 degree angle. So we have that, okay? The rest though definitely is now this new stuff and knowing how to plug these into your calculator. Um, so let's say for the first one, I want you to find AC. So AC is this side right here. 
Okay. We are looking for that side. You can call it what you want. You could make it an X right here. Typically, whatever side is opposite of the angle, you put that little variable. So a little B right here. I think a lot of people are comfortable with X's. It really doesn't matter. Um, let's use X. I think probably more people are, are going to go with that anyway. That's what we are solving for. So the only way we're going to be able to do that, since we don't know this third side, is with one of our little trig relationships, the whole little Sokotoa idea. So notice how there's three of these guys and all of them, a sine opposite hypotenuse. We have to have two of the three in order to figure out what that third one is. So look at this angle here. All right, this is the angle 51. The side that we are looking for with angle 51 is the opposite side. So the one that we're not going to use for sure is the cosine because the cosine doesn't include the opposite sine at all. So we don't have to worry about using that one. We then have to decide, will sine work or will the tangent work? I'm going to talk about the tangent first, just so we understand why it doesn't work. If I try to do the tangent, I would say the tangent of that 51 degree angle is the opposite side of X. But when I go to label the adjacent side, do I know what the adjacent side is? No. So we don't have enough information for the tangent either. So the only option here, hopefully is the sine. So if I now try to do a sine function, I'm going to say the sine of that angle B, which is 51 degrees, is the opposite side of X over the hypotenuse. Do we know the length of the hypotenuse? Yeah. So that's why we're going to be able to solve this. See if you understood how we solve this, because this is where thing, people just get confused what we're plugging into the calculator. Solve that now for X. Armando, what did you do to solve this? Good. Since we're trying to solve for the X there, we want to get rid of the 24. So we're going to multiply both sides by 24 so it cancels. So what you are plugging into your calculator is 24 times the sine of 51. I had the key somewhere. All right. What would you get there, Armando? What should that be? Uh, good. So X should be 18.65. Now we know the length of that side. Okay. So I'm going to erase this now. I can go ahead and say this is 18.65. All right. Now for this missing other side, I'm going to call this one Y. This is what we were looking for here. Now you have your options. Could we now use the Pythagorean theorem? Yeah, that's probably what I would suggest right now because you've been doing the Pythagorean theorem for many years. You learned it in junior high. You did a little bit in math one. We've done a little bit in math two. So you are probably most familiar with the Pythagorean theorem. So once we know two of the three sides, there's nothing stopping us from just doing the Pythagorean theorem where this is 18.65 squared. The hypotenuse must be that 24. And then now we just work our way through solving for that B squared. So let me throw this into the calculator, 24 and 18.65. All right, so make sure you get B squared to be 228.18. If you squared them all and subtract over. From there, we take the square root of both sides. So then we go ahead and do the square root of the answer that we just got, and we should get 15.11. All right, getting that. And then that's our length. All right, so we have both sides now. 18.65, 15.11, put them into the right spot here. All right, and then those are our two answers. <clears throat> All right, 
number two. Let's get our angle first, because again, that should be really easy. Uh, we know there's 180 degrees in a triangle. We know there's a 90 degree angle. We know there's a 16 degree angle. So if we just subtract those out of the full 180 that we know exists, that should give us the missing angle. All right, so that we've been doing really for a long time. We all knew that pretty well. That's a 74 degree angle. All right, let's see where we are at here. Uh, solve for EG. See if we could figure out what the length of segment EG would equal. Let's set this guy up. Um, so a couple things real quick. Um, actually, I saw Omar. What did you set up, Omar? I like what you had. All right. So we were looking for EG. So I'm going to highlight this guy. This is what I'll call my X since that's what we were looking for. And then what Omar set up, he understood that if this is our angle and the side that I know is here and the side that I want is here, through the idea of Sokotoa, he understood what trig function needed to be used with this 16. If this is 16, don't we know the opposite side and the hypotenuse of this angle? So the opposite side and the hypotenuse is the sine. So that is why he set up the sine of angle 16 is equal to 8 is the opposite side and the hypotenuse would have been an x. Okay? Now, if you use 74, because I saw two people trying to use a 74, 100% okay. But if you're going to use 74, look at what, ang what sides are now highlighted for 74. Isn't the highlighted side now the adjacent side of 74 and still the hypotenuse? So if you wanted to use 74, don't we need the adjacent and the hypotenuse? Then you better be doing the cosine of 74 is equal to the adjacent side of 8 over the hypotenuse of x. Either one of those is fine. Most people were doing this guy. That's what I would propose that you do use because that's the one that was given. But then we need to be able to solve this. So we still need to kind of go through that process. I did not see if you solved this correctly, Omar. Are you confident you solved this correctly? I saw your setup. What did you do next? Good. So we want to get rid of that x. So we're going to multiply that over so that we now have x times the sine of 16 is equal to 8. And then we got to do what? Good. Divide that sine of 16 over so that that is what you are plugging into your calculator. All right. So we throw that into the calculator. Uh, what would you get, Omar? Uh, good. You should get 29.02. That is the length of the hypotenuse. 
you got that, pretty good, because there are not too many people who are getting that at this point, and that's okay. You got some time to figure it out. All right, that should have been your answer. So now, if you don't like the Sokoto yet, if you haven't quite figured that out, don't we now know two of the three sides? So if I wanted this final missing side right here, now we can go ahead with the good old-fashioned Pythagorean theorem that we should be pretty good with. The hypotenuse we now know is the 29.02. The other side was the 8, and we can now figure out the B through the Pythagorean theorem. <clears throat> All right. All right, to save a little time on my calculator, I'm going to subtract the 8 squared over like this, so I can just plug it all in at once because on the calculator on the computer, it's a little awkward. So subtract the 8 squared over. So I'm going to do 29.02 squared minus 8 squared. All right, so 778.16, 78 That's then what you take the square root of, so square roots of that answer. If you have that calculator, so you have your calculator, if you haven't noticed, you can save a little bit of time. Just type in the answer right above this little negative sign is the word answer. So if you just hit that right now, you don't have to re-enter this big, long, na nasty number. It knows what the previous answer was, and you should get 27.90 if we round it to the hundredths. 27.90. All right, so that's our guy. All right, uh, number three. A little different. Now the easy one, the one that we can do without having to know the whole Sokotoa, the new right triangle trick stuff that we learned last week, we should be able to figure out this side very quickly. So figure out X, Z. So do that for me. Okay, the reason this should be nice is don't we know two of the three sides? Yeah, so that opens up the Pythagorean theorem for us. Um, the hypotenuse is what we were looking for. So I'll call that C since that's our hypotenuse. We typically call that the C. And you can just do the good old fashioned Pythagorean theorem here. All right, 10 squared plus 12 squared equals the hypotenuse squared. Uh, these I don't need my calculator for. So those we know are nice perfect squares. Add those together is 244. We get rid of squares with square roots. So we do the square root of 244. I said you can round these to the decimal, so don't worry about cleaning those up. Just whatever the square root of 244 equals. All right, 15.62. That's going to be your answer. Okay, so that should be the easy one here because we knew two of the three sides. All right, where the tricky one now is Let's do, we'll go in order now, now that we know that that segment is 15.62. Set up something that would give us angle X. So I now want you to find this missing angle right here. In the previous two questions, we knew two of the three angles. So I was able to do 180 minus those two. Now we don't know that angle. So now we are reliant on the whole Sokotoa idea. So now we gotta be able to set up one of those equations so that we can figure out what angle X is. All right, take a minute and see if you can do that.
anybody confident in the equation they got set up? You don't have to solve it. Do we understand how we can set one of these up? Anybody? All right, then Sarah. What's your favorite of all the trig functions, Sarah? Sine, cosine, or tangent? Sine. All right, so we're going to do sine. Sarah's going to set up a sine for us. If I want angle X and we want the sine of X, this is what we have been redoing repeatedly since last week. So if I want the sine of X, you, can you do that for me, Sarah? So if this is our X, what is the opposite over the hypotenuse going to give us? Good. That is one setup that would work for this problem. All right. Now, since we know all three of these sides, though, I'll set up one more. We really could do any of them. Let's say you like the tangent better. The tangent of X, we could do. The opposite side would have been 12. And the adjacent side would have been a 10. This equation would also work. Cosine would work. We could set up a cosine if we want. We obviously don't need to do all three of them. Either one of these is going to work. But now we need to remember how to solve this on our calculator. So we'll do the sine. So that's what Sarah gave us. That does tend to be the one that people like the most is the first one. If I want to solve for X, I need to get rid of this sign. The way we got rid of that sign is with this blue little sign to a negative one key above the original sign function on the calculator. Okay. So make sure you know how to access that. Make sure you know how to use that. So the way we now plug this in is on the calculator, you're going to do X equals that second sign key. So you're going to see a little sign to a negative one. And then you're going to plug in the 12 over 15.62. If you're not sure how to access that, Mr. Kubitz is around. I can come around real quick. This is now what you have to plug into your calculator. All right. There's no other way to do this with uh, than with your calculator. So you're going to do second. And then you get that little sign to a negative one now. So whenever you want an angle, we've got to do that. All right, what were the numbers? Uh, 12 and then 15.62. Hit enter. And you should get that angle to be 50.20, basically, if we round. All right, so 50.20. That is angle X. All right, so now at this point, you could set up another trig function to figure out the missing angle Z. That's okay. If you wanted to do another sine, cosine, or tangent, I would say you're being a little silly, especially as we're learning this and we're not real, real good at it just yet. Because now that I know two of the three angles, we can go back to the whole 180, subtract away that 90 degree angle, subtract away the angle that we just calculated for the other one. Whatever remains has to be this missing angle. All right, so we would just do that. So the 180 minus the angle that we just found, minus the 90 degree angle that was also in there, that has to be 39.8 degrees. All right. Okay. Probably good we didn't finish. I wasn't sure I wanted to give you homework on this the first night anyway, because this could be a little weird. Um, so bring this tomorrow. We'll do four as a little review. And then it'll be a nice opportunity to kind of work on this in class and we can see if you know what you're doing. Uh, make sure you have a calculator for these. You Obviously, you'll see you can't do any of these really without it. Okay. But no homework. You're free for the night. Is it working? Is that? Is that? Yeah, it works. Okay. All right. <clears throat>